Hello, and welcome to the Product Design Show. I'm Vince Penman. And I'm Allison Topperwine. This week we'll talk about robotics competitions and how to design a combat robot. The first robotics competition is a great way for high school students to learn from professional engineers and compete against other students from around the world. It's also a great way for the future creators of our robot overlords to meet up and begin plans on building our civilization's impending destruction. Each team of students has six weeks to build a robot to enter into the competition, where the robots compete in games like scoring goals with a ball, climbing towers, and lifting other robots off the ground. Over 50,000 students are participating in the competition this year. Last year's winner was from Wissahickon High School in Pennsylvania. The team designed their winning robot, Miss Daisy 9, with a low center of gravity and eight-wheel drive for optimal stability. Miss Daisy could launch a ball from anywhere on the field, which proved to be a key to success in the competition. Another robotics competition is RoboGames in California, the largest robotics competition in the world. The most popular event, of course, is the robot combat. In each three-minute matches, two robots duke it out in an attempt to destroy each other. In the super heavyweight division, 340 pounds and up, some robots can launch each other up to 10 feet with a weapon called a flipper. The arena is surrounded by bulletproof glass, which keeps the spectators safe from dangerous weapons and flying shrapnel, but not from the horrific spectacle that is mechatronics. Building a combat robot, whether it's a tiny 75 gram robot or a 300 pound heavyweight, requires six key items, a chassis, a motor, a transmitter, a receiver, a speed controller, and batteries. Oh, and an engineer's innate desire to build pure, unadulterated awesomeness. The chassis must be built to withstand hard hits from opponents. A well-built chassis is sturdy and minimizes weak points. Engineers at Pitzer Consulting demonstrate how to use software like Creo Parametric to identify these potential weak points. The red areas here clearly show the weak spots on this chassis part and indicate what should be redesigned. Other than maneuvering and running into things, good combat robots have weapons to take down their robotic opponents. Typical weapons include spikes, chainsaws, rotating blades, and motorized axes. Most, but not all, competitions ban fire weapons, which rules out the use of flamethrowers, because guns are just too civilized for these mecha warriors. In some competitions, the arenas themselves are also armed with weapons such as spikes, spinning blades, and pounding hammers. Check out the Kraken, one of the robots competing in last year's Robo Games, built by students at UC San Diego. These students used a wedge, one of the most common combat robot weapons. In these images, you can see inside the Kraken where the students position their power, shield actuators, and batteries. When combined, these integrated technologies gave the Kraken something their competition flipped over. The blog Hello Cad ran a vote last week for your favorite product design episode. And the winner was the Transformer Tractors episode. Seems engineers love the fold up harvester. Thanks to everyone who voted. We'll be sending some product design show swag to these voters Ben Fenton, Mark Havercork, and SR. You can see Creo Parametric in action, the same software that was used to analyze the robot chassis. Just visit ptc.com slash go slash Creo Parametric. That's it for the product design show this week. If you like the show, please give it a thumbs up on Facebook, subscribe on YouTube, or give us a rating on iTunes. Next week, we take you into the fascinating world of machine tool design.